let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Eight Frog Street, the first fiction by Rizal Khan, narrates the mysterious and thrilling tale of Lee Chan, a business tycoon, a multi-billionaire, surrounded by incredible mysteries with the help from strange and shadowy entities and a dead relative. Rizal worked in international development as an economist for many years. In his career, he wrote thousands of pages of economic and project reports. Eight Frog Street is based on his experience in Manila, where he lived for some years. Rizal is planning to write several other fictions, and Rizal Khan, author of Eight Frog Street, joins us from Bangladesh on This Week in America. I mentioned your background. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay, I my name is uh, Rizal Khan. Uh, so by training uh, and education, I'm an economist. So I worked uh, in international development uh, uh, in many countries, and my last uh, posting uh, was in uh, Manila, Philippines, where I worked for a major development bank for many years. And uh, my focus. Uh, of my work was on uh, macroeconomic development, programming, and developing you know, projects, infrastructure projects, and social projects. And uh, I work in many countries on that. And from uh, this multilateral development bank, uh, uh, I uh, retired in 2016. Then I came back to my country, uh, Bangladesh, where I started working as a consultant. And also, uh, you know, trying to write uh, uh, some 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 books. So, Eight Frog Street is my, uh, my uh, first book. So I'm planning to write uh, another book also. Thank you. Eight Frog Street is really a great story. Now, I want to give you all the information so you can get a copy of the book. Rizal Khan, that's spelled R-E-Z-A-U-L, and Khan is K-H-A-N. His website is very simple. His name, Rizal Khan. Dot com book available yeah. at uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, PageTurner.us, all of the places, and you'll find them listed. And you can link on by going to our website, ThisWeekInAmerica.us. I love the story. What a great imagination you have in telling the story at Eight Frog Street. What inspired you to write this book and tell this story? Okay, you know when I came back from uh, Manila to my country. My uh, friends and uh, former colleagues were asking me to write something about my ex- experience in uh, Manila. Okay, and uh, uh, so they uh, told me to write an autobiography, but I didn't didn't want to write an autobiography. So I wanted to write something uh, based on my experience and also differently. So then I thought that I would uh, write a, a thriller. Uh, based on my experience in Manila, what I have seen uh, there, and uh, people are superstitious, and the uh, Chinese are bec- becoming very rich because they are good at business. Those kind of things I want to try differently in a different language. Okay, so it is more uh, interesting. So basically, my friends and colleagues, uh, you know, they inspired me. It's just such a remarkable you've done you've with this job. This first fiction by our guest on the program, Rizal Khan, R E Z A U L K H A N. We've got that on our website information there. One of the reviews I think says it all. If you're a fan of supernatural, paranormal mysteries and thrillers, then this is definitely the ride you want to take. You really nailed it in this story. The book is a thriller, suspense, fantasy, as I mentioned. Why did you choose this genre of fiction, especially for your first book? Why did you choose this? Um, you know, in in uh, I I read the many uh, books, although I haven't written uh, the fiction type of book, but I wrote uh, many economic reports. Uh, but uh, theater and fantasy always, you know. Uh, was very. Uh, I was very interested in thriller and fantasy. I I, I uh, love the writer like uh, uh, J.K. Rowling. 
and the Stephen King and John Irving, you know, those uh, uh, thriller I, I, I read it, I loved it. So always I thought that I will write, one day I will write a thriller, but uh, it, it may not be so late. So I thought uh, I will write it, but in a different way. It's not, uh, it's, a, it, it's to express something, a fiction. Some some real even in a, in a way that it uh, sounds uh, like a thriller, and also you know, uh, fantasy. It, and then also the market demand. There is a more market demand for thriller than fantasy. And uh, I know that I can look at uh, Amazon and, and other other online platform. I know what kind of uh, books people now read. Yes. So that's what. Uh, you know, Taylor was my choice. Well, you've given us what we want. This is an excellent job that you've done and such a fascinating story on many levels that we'll talk about during our conversation. Now, I mentioned you lived in the Philippines at, the, at some point in time. Any events in that country that influenced you to write this, uh, write this book, Eight Frog Street? Okay, and in the Philippines, you know, uh, I lived there for some time, and I visited the country. I went to the many places and cities and towns, you know. And uh, I have seen this uh, people. Uh, the people are uh, a bit uh, superstitious, you know. They believe in uh, certain future and uh, house. Where we lived, we have we we had uh, two home workers. They were so superstitious. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, I haven't heard in any country like that. And uh, also the Chinese community, they are flourishing, you know. The Chinese people are coming and then become uh, rich, super rich within a short time. So I, I wanted to look at that, how, how come they are becoming so rich. So then I found they are really very hardworking. And their uh, business uh, acumen is very sharp. They are good at that. So uh, their uh, progress is like uh, something uh, they have done. Maybe some federal power helped them. So I wanted to express in that way. But there is there wasn't any federal in any book. But but in my imagination, I thought that I would uh, tell their story in a way that some power, some power, extraordinary power helped them. Otherwise, how come they become so rich in 30, uh, 30 years? And, uh, and uh, multi-billionaires, so uh, the, the, the book, uh, the, the hero is uh, Lee Chan. He becomes a multi-billionaire. So I thought I would, uh, I would, I, I would uh, like to uh, you know, capture those uh, shady power in my imagination and also uh, the um, the Filipino people uh, why why they are so uh, interested in uh, supernatural things so I wanted to combine that so it become a interesting story it's such a wonderful story and our guest on the program if you're just joining us is Rizal Khan and I'll give you the spelling so you can google it go to his website the spelling is R E Z A U L Khan K H A N. His website is resultcon.com. Book at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all of the usual places, pageturner.us, and a link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. I just briefly touched on the storyline in the introduction. Don't want to give anything away here, but can you tell us briefly the story of, of the fiction Eight Frog Street? Okay. This is that is story of Lee Chan. This guy uh, came to um, Flippin in 1930 at the age of 10, you know. He was, a, he was from Fujian, China. So poor, you know, he had no resources, nothing. But in 30 years' time, he become a super rich, uh, multi uh, billionaire. you know. This is uh, unbelievable. And actually, there are uh, some, some uh, you know, real uh, cases in Philippines where this kind of, you know, super progress happened. So that inspired me. And this uh, Lee Chan, uh, uh, 
king and also his uh, grandmother you the spook of his grandmother also accompanied him from the china to manila so in the story you see this uh, this uh, lady spook of uh, his grandmother was instrumental for the success of religion in uh, business and everywhere and uh, he successfully eliminated his uh, business rival and also he uh, successfully faced the policy changes you know and uh, also in legal matter everywhere this uh, uh spoke of uh, his grandmother helped me helped me okay <laughs> so uh so become super rich but this uh, lady uh, uh spoke was also uh, you know responsible in killing in killing rich and son in in, in us and also for the death of uh, lee chan uh, uh uh that that uh, ghost lady was uh, responsible because at the end what happened um that that uh, this uh, this uh, lee chan became a senile you know at the old age and he was getting a lot of obstacle in the running the business by his grand children okay then then we can you know arrange this killing killing to kill him you know and 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 he uh, helps the the grand uh, children he grand children to become the owner of the business uh with 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 a hard help because uh for the uh, the spook always they love a uh, great great grand child more than the grand child you know because they believe in the love goes uh, down on you know in the line is yes so that's what uh, he did okay it's such a well written story and it comes alive as you're reading it you've got the mysterious woman in white you've got frogs a giant snake invading the streets a mysterious piano music uh, at night if if there ever was a, a, a script a, a book for, that is movie material i would think this is it is there any talk about turning this into a movie you've got all the elements there yeah this uh, actually you know in in the house that we live this uh, little giant snake did attack you see <laughs> and also uh, a <laughs> giant, giant frog also attacked okay So they attacked our house so when just uh, we started uh, living in the house they attacked it and uh, so we were really surprised and uh, the frog was so big you know they you know they, we are so my daughter and children were really afraid you know and uh, and then we tried to uh, you know find out what happened actually those uh, snakes and frogs came from a home of a influential guy you know that that's the story you know but i explained it in a different way okay yes a movie i mean you've got all the all the moving parts there for a movie have you talked about maybe doing a motion picture based on 8 frog street yeah and uh, the motion picture uh, yeah that's possible so go ahead i think um uh, it a uh, a film producing company has showed interest and my agents are working so possibly there will be a movie that would be fantastic and in the meantime you've got the book and you will enjoy reading this book by Rizal Khan our guest on the program coming to us from Bangladesh the book is 8 Frog Street Rizal Khan R E Z A U L K H A N his website resolcon.com now in the book you cover a great deal on biological warfare are these the products of your yeah. imagination or is there any possibility that such warfare could actually happen you get to thinking these things as you, as you read the book is that based on any possibility that the, this could actually happen uh this actually there is a biotech uh, company uh the uh, that was uh, uh set up by li chan uh the hero of my uh, book oh yes uh, in few countries 
it's my imagination. A few countries, you know, invested in biotechnology company in Manila, and the Lee Chan uh, was the uh, chairperson of that. Okay, so uh, so bio biotechnology is actually uh, is bio uh, oil, uh, oil point, you know, this like uh, virus, okay, and, uh, and and also a lot of germs, you know. This can be used to eliminate your enemies and con contaminate uh, uh, livelihood and uh, agriculture. You know, they, it could, many millions of people can be killed. So this bio biological warfare uh, was, uh, you know, it's not nothing is new. It, for hundreds of years, uh, you know, the army tried to use that even during the first. World War and Second World War, you know, many countries developed biological warfare, okay? That is why all from, but there is a UN convention that restricts using bioweapons, okay? Yes. So, but it's still, countries are doing it. some countries are doing research, they can do it. So, they can produce uh, a lot of biological products and uh, for the, uh, for uh, uh, helping the human in eliminating disease in you know, a there is demand by the pharmaceutical sector but some uh, some countries you know if uh, you know they might uh, prepare bio iphone also so in that that's a bio uh, biotechnology company in in the Philippines that uh, i imagine they might have uh, developing some bio iphone and they are selling it to some some countries you know so uh, you know let's Say the coronavirus. So, if some people are saying that it's, uh, it's the product of some research, you know, uh, but I we don't, we don't know. There are a lot of controversy on that. But 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 uh, biological uh, warfare has the potential to become serious uh, uh, by weapon. Uh, so we must we must uh, strictly follow the UN uh, convention not to use this. Kind of uh, oh, yes. uh, war uh, items. Okay, you've done such a wonderful job with this. Are you writing more books, and what kind of, of fiction are you writing now? What kind of? Yeah, you've done such a wonderful job with hear. this. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't hear you. What is the question? Yeah, the question is, you're writing more books, I understand, and I'm wondering if you're writing any more fiction because you've done such an excellent job with this. Are you, are you working on a fiction book now? Yeah, I am uh, working on uh, uh, another, an, an, another uh, filler type of book that is, uh, that is uh, Chief Graveyard, you know. You know the word is Chief Graveyard? Oh, oh where yes. The, Okay, and uh, so this uh, my this, this book is about Tom uh, Sullivan. He was born in an abandoned ship in the Mellows Bay uh, near uh, Potomac River. So, uh, but his uh, parents uh, disappeared from there, uh, leaving behind this one-year child. So, this uh, Tom Sullivan, when he uh, became you know 16, 15 years old, then he you know knew everything. So then he was, uh, he tried to, uh, you know, investigate it, and then he did it, and that was uh, the story how he discovered who killed his parents and why he was uh, left uh, behind, and so that the mysterious uh, chiefs are involved and mysterious uh, uh, people are involved in that, and ultimately he found out that story. That's the story. Of the sheep given and this kind of book uh, wasn't written before. Well, I think you've got another winner there with that. I love your writing style, and you bring the characters all come to life, and uh, the, and you find all follow all of uh, uh, the the books coming up in Rizal's website, which is rizalcon.com. I'll give you that before we wrap up the program today. Mention the the Hollywood movies. I want to go back and, and touch on that for a second because there is a, that possibility the, in writing for the the movies. What kind of challenges does an author face to to write fiction for Hollywood movies? What do you go through to that process? Okay, so there are a lot of challenges, but uh, you need the uh, 
money to make money. <laughs> oh, exactly. It's, it's, it's yes. Like, <laughs> it's like that uh, you can write a, a book, okay? You can upload in the Amazon, but uh, the film producing companies may not notice that, okay? So you need to spend money for advertising and also publicity, seminar workshop, that's made, uh, you know, money. And uh, that's the one thing. And also, I mean, that's from US, but from other countries, other developing countries, it's very really difficult to get in the Hollywood. Again, that's, that's the money. But, but also another thing is that you have to write the right kind of book. What are in the demand now, okay? You can write a lot of fiction, but that may not uh, be in the demand. You know, maybe film producing companies and the audience may want a different kind of novel. So that is also important, but but uh, money is also important. It's interesting, the behind the scenes, the, the creative process is one thing, which uh, Rizal has has matured, uh, has mastered, but then getting it out there and turning it into a motion picture, all of the behind the scenes stuff an artist goes through to get uh, his art product available to the public, our guest on the program, Rizal Khan, i got a minute or so left here. You talk about getting into different countries. You can, of course, buy the copy, and I told you where to pick up a copy here in the U.S. Is that available in your country? Can uh, can you buy a copy uh, there? Uh, <laughs> that's very interesting, you see, because uh, in my country, in the bookstore, it's not available, but uh, I found it in the street vendor is selling it, you see. So... Uh, where did you get it? Because maybe somebody has imported it and they can they just photocopy it now in a high powered photocopy machine are available. Okay, so they copy and, and they sell it. That's that's very unfortunate. What how, what can you do? You cannot stop that. <laughs> it's uh, so fascinating. But, Our guest from Bangladesh has been the author Rizal Khan. That's R E Z A U L Khan K H A N. His website is rizalkhan dot com. And you'll find the book here in the United States with no problem at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, pageturner.us, all of the usual places. I thank Page Turner Press and Media for arranging our conversation today with Rizal on the program. Rizal, congratulations on the success of 8 Frog Street, a job well done. Looking forward to that, uh, hopefully coming to a movie screen near us at some time, and looking forward to the next book as well. Thank you for being with us on the program. Okay. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Our guest on the program, Rizal Khan. You'll find information, of course, on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.